That looked like fucking around to me. <laughs> what up, my Toronto? VK on the beat. Check. Uh, I'm in Toronto, where you wanna get the city love. Oh. I'm from Toronto, where you wanna get the city love. Okay. I'm in Toronto, where you wanna get the city love. That's right. My city love me back. Welcome to episode 1185 of Toronto Mike, proudly brought to you by Great Lakes Brewery, a fiercely independent craft brewery who believes in supporting communities, good times, and brewing amazing beer. Order online for free local home delivery in the GTA. Palma pasta. Enjoy the taste of fresh. Homemade Italian pastas and entrees from Palma Pasta in Mississauga and Oakville. Did I say pastas? Do you pluralize pasta? Pasta is plural. Depends on the pasta. You know that, Ben. Come on. Electronic Products Recycling Association. Committing to our planet's future means properly recycling our electronics of the past. Ridley Funeral Home, pillars of the community since 1921. Canna Cabana, the lowest prices on cannabis. Guaranteed over 100 stores across the country. Learn more at cannacabana.com. And Sammy Cone Real Estate. Ask Sammy any real estate questions at sammy.cohn at properlyhomes.ca. Joining me today, returning to Toronto mike is Ben Rayner. Hello. Welcome back, Ben. You know, uh, Ridley Funeral Homes uh, uh, <laughs> catalyzed a conversation about the word cadaver with my daughter. <laughs> Earlier today, we were riding the streetcar, and I was yeah. like, she's like, well, what do you do when you're on there? And I was like, hey, well, you know, sometimes we drink beer, and he gives me a lasagna. And, oh, and, and then and I was like, another one of his sponsors is a funeral home. But he doesn't give me a cadaver. <laughs> and then she was like, what's a cadaver? So I had this awkward conversation. Okay, shout out to Ridley Funeral Home. Right <laughs> yeah, out yeah. of the hop. Okay, can, let's pop our beers right now. Okay, which one are you going to... I gave a bunch of there, oh, but I there's like law. Oh, there's loggers. Wait, do you want... Is there something you want to have? No, a, I like them all, man. I, okay, so that Haze Mama is one of their great IPAs. I'm going to crack open... I like open. the Octopus, but I like the Haze Mama. Okay, because I later... I'll I put get, away a lot of burst. Okay. I really do drink a lot of Grease Lakes. <laughs> you know, I'm cracking open a burst, so... Mm, I'm having a... What is this thing called? Haze Mama. Haze Mama. Okay, tell me what you think, and I'll run up... Since you want like the IPAs, I'll run up and get you another one, but... Uh, like you're legit. Like even when you're not drinking free Great Lakes, you're a Great Lakes brewery guy. Yeah, no, I think I snuck on out of the life front of the star. <laughs> I'm being a good this uh, last week, like holding a holding a Great Lakes can in my being a good parent with a Great Lakes can in my hand at the Toronto Ferry Docks. This this uh, article you're referencing was called "A uh, Finding Sanctuary in a Stroller: How Pushing My Kid Around Toronto Became My Therapy." Because it did. <laughs> you wrote in, <laughs> you so, knew that. I, I knew this. Yeah, well, let, let me set the table this way. This is not your first Toronto Mike episode. You, if people like hearing Ben Rayner on Toronto Mike, there are several in the archives to choose from. Like, you've been amazing on this show. And way back when, Ben, you once did like a brain dump of like songs you love. I don't know if you rem even remember doing this, but you, you gave me, I don't know, 50 songs. So It's hard to narrow it down to 10. Right. So every time you came over, I just picked another 10 and played it or whatever. And the last batch is going to get played tonight. That is a nice surprise. I know. You didn't know this either. So I got some more, some Ben jams here. We'll play them. Ben will talk to us about them. Uh, do you believe in God, Ben Rayner? Uh, not really, but I do believe in a universal ordering force because I'm into theoretical physics. So I'm trying to figure out what that is. At, at the but end you believe of the day, in, you believe in UFOs. The closer, yeah, yeah, but the closer you get, to, like the further you go into like theoretical physics, I find the closer you get to like faith and religion. So, in that sense, I believe in math. Okay, because you said you'd be here on time. Uh, God, God, God and TCC, TCC willing. Yeah, so let's I'm not talking about that. Did they just <laughs> arbitrarily dump the streetcar west of Dufferin? You know what? I don't Long take Ridge? it. Can you? I don't know. I don't know. Like I legit don't take it. Like I just bike everywhere because i can't stand yeah, well, it and if i have to get like I, I will take the go so i'll get my ass from union station to mimico on the go and then from mimico to here i'll figure it out yeah that's that may be my way home if i don't walk uh, uh but 
I, I asked the guy. I got on. I was just like, what's with the streetcar? Why is there no streetcar? And all I got was like a contemptuous look and a <laughs> genuine just shrug. <laughs> that's service, brother. That's, yeah, yeah. that's service so like, in uh, uh, John this, Tory's Toronto. I think this is a perfectly reasonable question to ask. Why, why is there no streetcar for like the last <laughs> third of this route? I don't know. I ha- before off. we get to this before we get to this article that you wrote for the Toronto Star, I can't believe you're finally published in the Toronto Star. Congratulations, yeah, Ben! It's Rand. a long time coming, eh? So before we talk about that, and then before we get to these jams and everything, uh, your former colleague uh, Ed Keenan came over last week, and basically after he updated us on like the, it was the second anniversary of the attempted insurrection in the, the Capitol uh, building there in Washington, and and uh, he was there. He was there, so he was talking about, Ed was talking about, like, what it was like being there witnessing it. But then after that, we basically, sh- like, talked about all the things wrong with our city. Do you still love, do you still love Toronto? Did you ever love Toronto? Maybe? I, I, I do love Toronto. Like, I, I, I miss, I, I went home, I went back to the East Coast. I have a lot of places I call home, right, because I'm from England, and I grew up in Newfoundland and New Brunswick, and I still have family and roots in all those places. Um, I miss the ocean. But then there's times when I think I'd miss Toronto because it does have all this cool stuff. But I do think it's becoming a bit of a douchey playground for the rich, especially like my neighborhood yeah. on weekends is insufferable. And I, and I don't mean that as like, oh, the bridge and tunnel crowd are coming in. It's just like the, the, the kind of, what do you call, like the wanton display of wealth. Like the con- conspicuous consumption it drives me nuts. Like I, I, I don't like it. It's, it's got a bit of that like, a friend of mine was saying this to me the yeah. other day. He's like, it's, it's got an L.A. attitude, but it's also turning into, like, New York in the 70s, <laughs> like, which is true. It's like, See, the, I like the gap it. is widening. See, I don't like the L.A. attitude, but when I wa- watch a film or, like, a TV show and it takes place, like, in the 70s New York, I dig the look, man. I'm digging that aesthetic. Yeah, no, I like a bit of grit. Look who you're talking to. I like your, your end of town. I like walking along here because it's like there's a, the possibility you might get knifed after like a certain point. Like, I, I like that. They've, they've been, there's certain people who bought in this neighborhood who've wanted like Lakeshore to gentrify. This has been the thing. And there was a moment of like several years ago when the coffee time closed. And you could like, see their smiles from here. Like, it's like the coffee time is closing. Do you know what that means? Like, next comes in the Starbucks. Yeah, and that meant these- the Galaxy Donuts already <laughs> went down, though. Like it used to be that oh, hierarchy. The Galaxy, remember the one at Lansdowne and Bloor? Oh, I remember them all. These are my, like, those are my spots. I, on my days off quite often, I just go drink in the drug park in Kensington and watch people and talk to them because I, I feel like the addicts and the crazies and the, and the thieves are probably closer to my people okay, than my so new neighbors. While we're talking about the city you live in and uh, the city, the only city I've ever lived in, by the way, fun fact, <laughs> I'm pathetic, okay? Yeah. So ben, I'm pathetic. <laughs> I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere not one of your jams but how did you find in a nutshell people should go to the toronto star and find this uh article but uh how did you find sanctuary in a stroller like i know you've told this this, you use toronto mike as your like (laughs) test bed for these ideas and then you you write this great piece for the star but give us the uh like a reader's digest version like uh how did pushing your kid around the city become your therapy ben rayner oh well as you know i think this is Probably the first place I talked in public about it after kind of going crazy and disappearing. I had like a a pretty bad bout of depression, like suicidal ideation uh, and all that shit. And my job was ending at the Star because they were killing the entertainment section and all that stuff. And it caught up with me and I went a bit batty. But then we went up north to my friend Nancy's place. Uh, she lives in a little town. It's like 188 people or something around Shelburne. Wow. And she worked, she was seconded from her job at a museum up there to the length and disaster management council. And my girlfriend uh, trains crisis counselors for kids' cell phones. So it was like, you have to get that kid out of here all day, right? Like we're in, we're in a small house. So I got in the habit of being outside with her all day, um, pulling her around in a wagon up there because we didn't take the stroller because we thought we were going to go for a couple of days. I only had one pair of pants. We went up living up there for a month. Wow. And then when we came back to the city, I was like, I'm not fucking staying in my apartment. You know, I, I, I'm not that kind of person. You, you've known me for a while now. So my right. kid and I just went out all day, every day, rain or shine, from like 10 in the morning, sometimes to like Rain or that. shine? <laughs> yes. You, you can steal that. Often in the rain. But like we just, we just, so the city was empty and cool. Like we'd play in statues at 
or U of T or Queens Park. You know, like all the playgrounds are roped off. So we just found cool shit to do. And some insane we did that though. Like that was ridiculous that they actually like roped off the playground. Oh, play, like the playgrounds of police tape around them with the saddest thing. Oh my god. No, yeah. honey, you can't, you know. Eventually it took this so Toronto too. Like eventually, like five months in, people tore them down. <laughs> Whereas <laughs> it should have been five minutes in, been, in yeah. hindsight. Yeah. In hindsight, I wish I had done something. But uh but like many others, I'm like, let's exercise on the side of caution. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Hey, before I get too far, I, I don't want to forget this. Um, I really want your passionate and heartfelt take on the proposal to put a private spa and 2,000 uh, uh, parking you- spots uh, on the uh, site of Ontario Place. Ben, every time I bike Ontario Place through the, the Trillium Park there and I go around, I keep I look for you every time. I'm, I'm usually like, there. Yeah, I, you're usually there. I have <laughs> I got to find you. I got to find you. But please. The, the microphone's yours. I will shut up. No one wants to hear Toronto Mike right now. Ontario Place. I that, Well, this ties into the the whole thing we were just talking about, about wheeling my daughter around. Because um, for part of that summer, this is the summer COVID hit. Um, even Toronto, we couldn't go to Toronto Island, right? Unless you wanted to pay for a water taxi or whatever. Fuck that shit. Um, you don't have a kayak for two? <laughs> no, I usually get <laughs> marina passes off. So my, my friend Jim and Sandra actually. Oh, nice. <laughs> I'm a high roller. Uh, but yeah, so one of the places we discovered, and we, that was kind of one of the first places I would go when she was just walking and stuff. And they had those light exhibitions there in the winter a couple couple years. Because when Trillium Park opened, it was still shuttered. And then when they opened it, not a lot of people knew the Ontario place. So the first couple of years, and this is when she was a baby, I just wheel her down there when she was sleeping. And it'd be like, it's like something at a Logan's Run, right? Just yeah. the derelict amusement park. And we, it just became one of our places. So that summer we were there like almost every day. Uh, in fact, I ran into, there was a counselor, Stephanie something, who was down there um, doing oh, a Stephanie, video. Stephanie, all the way to Stephanie K. <laughs> yes, that, exactly person. that one. Okay. Um, doing a video because she's fighting to save the beach, which is our point, I think we're getting to. And we would hang out on that beach, sit in our same rocks every day. And uh, and uh, like I said, this, this counselor was, or like former counselor candidate, She's like, I remember you and your daughter. I saw you down here all the time. And I'm like, yeah, this was like our office right. for that whole six months when I was basically out buying out money and being a dad. Um, and I, it's like the it's the equivalent of going to the island downtown. Like it, it's a clean beach. The West Beaches are absolute shit. Like I've watched a sewer burst at Sunnyside, and then the beach has been closed the rest of the summer. It's it was disgusting, but it's that's an, a reasonably clean downtown beach yes. and without having to go to the island or suffering the ignominy of taking the TTC to the beaches, right? right? Like it's, and now the fact that they want to like pour concrete around it and put a fucking pool that you have to pay to go to there. It's insane. Well, it's offensive. The whole notion of a private spa on the site of Ontario place is like just a, such an offensive notion. Yeah. Like, it's a provincial park essentially. So do you want to pledge? I like if this thing somehow proceeds and I don't know what's going on anymore because you got this Biff, like premier and you got the superpower like some 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 super powered mayor like i don't know what's going on anymore i don't know how democratic it all is anymore but will you join me we will chain ourselves to the oh I, no that beach isn't i'm not letting that beach go without a fight like that's one of my happy places it's, i i i I owe, I owe part of my life probably to that beach. I was there on Sunday. Like, I go down there all the time. I, I was swimming until November. Like, mm. I can't do the year-round thing like Steve Mann and his crew, although I've befriended them. Uh, but someday. But still, the fact you're swimming there till November, uh, kudos to you. That's amazing. So... Okay, brother, we gotta we gotta keep in touch on this matter. So I don't know where yeah, it's yeah, at, no, I, and I, I just know the pr- I've read the proposal, and it's bullshit. It's like a nine-story building. On the West Island, where all the the like the little petting zoo or whatever you, you where the uh, log ride was, right? Save the log ride. Yeah. Okay, I like the derelict log ride. S- speaking of derelict uh, properties in this city, okay, the spooky roller disco. Now magazine, which uh, maybe it's, you can argue it's been dead for a while, but to me, the official like time of death was when. Glenn Sumi couldn't log into his email address. <laughs> like like when he when he's locked out of his nowtoronto.com email. That's your yeah, that's when you call it or whatever. And then news comes out yesterday. I don't know if you were fall up to date on this, but I didn't even know now still existed. Well, it's it's, it's a website. I don't think there's anyone working there anymore cuz <laughs> even Glenn can't work there anymore. So okay, when when you lose Glenn, you've lost now. Okay. Now is gone. But 
they they had I guess they're in bankruptcy, so they don't have to pay anyone all those uh, back wages and severance and all this money is owed to all these good people, you know, from well, all the good people and now you know them better than yeah. anybody. Then uh, I guess the bankruptcy thing meant they had to sell the assets and well, they had these digital assets, like they had a domain name and a website and uh, social media. Uh, accounts and they had a logo like this digital package of now and a gentleman's uh, there's a guy named Brandon Gomez who used to be on CP24 but now he's like behind his own uh, little little media group sort of like how I'm behind my little media group TMDS but I think he's got maybe he's got yeah an empire but he might have more than one employee I'm not sure but Brandon he saw I don't know what he paid for it but he bought these digital assets and he's going to relaunch like now in like a week or something and so time and will print, tell. Or just no, as a website. zero print. No, yeah. just they're just. I think they're Print's just coming gonna... back. Trust me. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> have you read the grind? I have not. Okay, well that's. I keep that's, hearing uh, about it, but that seems to be the way it goes. Everyone's like, "Have you heard about the grind?" And I was like, suddenly I started hearing about it. Everyone. So I distrust it. When people tell me to check something out, <laughs> oh, you got to see this movie. No, I had a guy here, Jim Shedden, who back in like the uh, '80s was creating zines like he was big on zines and i'm thinking like like he was he's just a little older than me i feel like that could have been me doing the zine thing back in the 80s okay but i digress it would not have been me i like discipline uh it's a miracle here's I my problem here. here's the thing so brandon paid whatever got the digital assets he could do what he want good luck to brandon this is not even really about brandon it's more about like when you buy a company, but you're really not buying, the, the company owes money to a lot of good people who worked hard in good faith, okay? So now Magazine or whatever, their owners, they owe this money, but they declare bankruptcy to somehow avoid having to actually, like, f- you know, fulfill that obligation and that responsibility. But the digital assets are sold. So now there'll be a bunch of noise made by, oh, we saved now. Now has been resurrected. Here's the new now, Toronto. Meanwhile, there's no obligation for the new owner, Brandon Gomez, to give a penny to these Glenn Sumis and, uh, you know, these uh, Norm Wilners of the world. Uh, what, what's your feelings on well, that as a newspaper guy? Well, it's, I mean, that's half the reason I, I like, I, I, I've been freelancing a lot for the star because they don't fuck with my coffee and mm. they pay on time, which is very rare. Like I've, I, I will not name names, but I, I've dealt with other uh, journalistic institutions of some repute, and wow. it's like a fucking agonizing struggle to get paid. And things I'm talking about, like new owners, I like Spin, Spin dot com. You owe me money, like for a couple of things because they got bought out, and then things like that. And like I, I could, I could go on like every writer I know who's done freelance stuff, and that's kind of half the reason I like I can't be bothered to do magazine stuff anymore because half of them go down the tubes or they oh we can't pay it oh. it's just like <laughs> no it's no fun so i i will stick with the people who pay me it should there be any and i know legally there's not so i should preface it with that so you know brandon's not breaking any laws here or anything but like you know when you buy the company but you don't buy the like the debt obligations or whatever it is a bit of a like it's not a sweet feel-good story like it, it should be it's like I'm these are real that. people who walk amongst us and sit in my basement who are owed thousands and thousands like the combined owing is over is in six figures no i know like i know so many writers with those stories and it's always like oh we're cleaning poverty cleaning poverty it's like you got the work out of us and you you know it's been three years cough i could like i could go on and on that's why, like, I, I, I kind of hate freelancing for that reason. I don't know that I would, like, I, I'm kind of over it. So um, how are you making money these days? I am basically managing a record shop uh, five days a week and writing on the side. It's cool. nice. I write when I want to write, and I don't have to eat shit. Eat corporate shit. Yeah, you know, you don't have to do that anymore. Now, I just biggest- play records all day, man. <laughs> so we're gonna play some records right now uh you know press play on mp3 files that's how i play records here but like the biggest question everybody wants to know we did get an update from you at tmlx11 because you came out and that was awesome to see you at palma's kitchen only two hours late but better you were on time as far as i'm concerned because we got you in before we closed up shop do you enjoy the lasagna from palma pasta whatever pasta i took home that night was astonishingly good uh, it's delicious, have, man. Yeah, no. not, you know, yeah, yes, they pay me, but I would tell you this before they gave me a penny. I would tell you, Palma's Kitchen, Palma Pasta, delicious, man. You're gonna take a lasagna home with you. Uh, no, my my girls are 
eagerly anticipating. Okay, it's good. good. But Imagine honestly, you got to go to the happen. source. Like that, that's yeah. in the middle of friggin' nowhere. But <laughs> and well, like the, the fresh <laughs> pasta there is palmapasta.com. Yeah, it's yeah. there's four locations, so you can get like there's one at here Ontario and Queensway, which is a little more TTC friendly. But uh, you know, there's one in Oakville too. There's four of them. But it took me two and a half hours to walk to that place. How long, how long from door to door, from your home to this home I'm in right now? Oh, what was the door to door? Oh, to like to here, I usually walk home. It's about an hour, maybe. I walk home from Broadview and Danforth to Dundas and Othington every day. Do like, you count your steps by any chance? Are you, you going to tell me you did uh, 47,000 st- steps today or something? My like old phone used to keep track of that shit and yeah. it said I averaged something like 16 to 18 kilometers a day. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, yeah, yeah, no. no that would be a good bike pathology. day. Okay, it's, good for you. By the way, your shirt, uh, Wolf Island Music Festival 2017. I had Chris Brown here recently. He owns that uh, like that hotel or whatever he's got going on at Wolf Island. I love Wolf Island. I also love the Wolf Island Music Festival, uh, which my dear friend Virginia runs. Um, uh, and it, I don't know, it's just a magical place. I think about moving to Kingston just so I could maybe live on Wolf Island. Well, I feel like um, it's lawless. Steven, Steven Stanley lived there, or is he moving there? I don't know. We maybe we had this chat before. I got to find out what's up with Steven Stanley. Hey, are you okay if like like, like if, you know anything that comes in your head you can share? But can I start kicking out these jams of yours? I've been holding uh, on to these things for years. Yeah, it's so I'm picking the order here. So like I said, I, ha- I don't. I've only been inside once here. As, oh. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Should we move it outside? I, I was kind of hoping you'd resurrect the backyard. It's the gear. Too. I'm always afraid of the gear. Like I get out there. It's let's say it's let's pretend it's like minus two or something like that. But like, is this all going to be is this expensive shit? Like, I feel is like it we had one dodgy night where things were frightening. Not surprising. Not yeah, surprising. I, think, I think things were blowing over and getting wet. <laughs> I am going to start purposely with this song because I think this is a good starting point. I remember when I was a little girl, our house caught on fire. I'll never forget the look on my father's face as he gathered me up in his arms and raced to the burning building out of the pavement. And I stood there, shivering in my pajamas, and watched the whole world go up in flames. And when it was all over, I said to myself, Is that all there is to a fire? Is that all there is? Is that all there is? If that's all there is, my friends, then let's keep dancing. Let's break out the booze and have a ball. If that's all. And when I was 12 years old, my dad... Peggy Lee. Ben, talk to me about Is That All There Is. I hope my dad's listening to this because it's his fault. I He thought, played this to me at a very early age. And I I think it's just called Peggy, This Is Peggy Lee or something. I play this record at my uh, day job at Cops Records on the Danforth all the time. I love this song. And then a few years ago, uh, well, not a few years, probably 10 years ago, on one of her albums with uh, uh, John Parrish, PJ Harvey did a cover of it that's even more like dead eyed. And your As, daughter's named after PJ Harvey. Yes, she is my other bride, PJ Harvey. Um, <laughs> but there's like the, the the part in the song where Peggy Lee's like, and I, you know, I fell in love. And then he laughed and I thought I would die, but I didn't. The PJ Harvey one is like, and I thought I would die, but I didn't. And it's just the like, it's so cold. Uh, uh, I don't know. It's a beautiful song. Uh, it's obviously, Peggy Lee didn't write it, but uh, she has the the claim to the definitive version. And it's just, it's funny. It's mo- like darkly funny. Mordantly funny. Oh, here it is. With the most wonderful boy in the world. We take long walks down by the river or just sit for hours gazing into each other's eyes. Right. We were so very much in love. And then one day he went away, and I thought I'd die, but I didn't. <laughs> and when I didn't, I said to myself, Is that all there is to love? Is that all there is? 
It's bonkers. It's so good. I have memories of this song in a, like a pivotal scene on uh, Mad Men. Is that possible? Probably. Probably. Well, that, that seems on brand <laughs> I, from my limited knowledge of television and Mad Men. Yeah. Like I, I feel like if you were gonna have that's a, a fitting tune. For what I <laughs> what I imagine Mad Men is in my head. So you've never seen it. And am I might go with the TV. I, I ADHD man. I can't sit still. Look at me. I'm fidgeting right now. That's why those uh, chairs have the swivel. Okay, so Randy Newman is the uh, arranger. And conductor of this uh, jam. Did you know that? That one? The Peggy Lee one? Yeah. Really? Oh, I'm on the Wikipedia page for this song. Yeah. It's uh, Randy Newman's credited with a arranger and conductor. Interesting. I wonder if it's the same Randy Newman. It's got to be. It can't be two. <laughs> How many Randy Newman? can't be two. Can Here, I'll click through. Yeah, it's the same. One and the only. Okay. Shout out to short people. Wow. Well, my estimation of Randy Newman. <laughs> this went up slightly. <laughs> anyway, it's a badass song. Eva Death disappoints her. <laughs> Is Broken social scene. Ben, talk to me about Lover's Spit. That's a goodie. I haven't listened to that in a while. Uh, well, this, don't worry. We have another four and a half minutes, so it's going to be uh, yeah, sticking yeah, with us. Yeah. Yes, that's, that's the record, the studio version. <laughs> um, I don't know. I remember the first time I heard this record, You Forgotten People, and, and pretty much everyone involved in that band is been a friend of mine since before they were that man um and i was this is a good story actually i was at uh at german at the doors of the 21st century the debacle yeah, with like ian asbury uh of singing course. in place yeah. of jim morrison and yeah and uh, uh Stuart copeland on drums i i had to go to barry to uh, the old molson park to watch that with like 3,500 people, like like in a place that holds 35 or 40,000 people. It was a thing. And on the drive back, my buddy Kieran Grant, who was then the music writer for the uh, the Toronto Sun, he's like, fuck, have you heard like Brendan and Kevin's new record? And I'd just gotten like my burn, like my CDR of it. And I was like, and, and he's like, it's really good. Like, it's really good. And uh, I was like, don't play it in the car. Don't play it in the car. I need, I need a moment. And I, I, as you know, I, I go dark sometimes, and I, I'd had a bit of a dark period. I put it on the next morning, and I smoked a, sorry, Toronto Star, smoking a joint on the way to work. That's shout out to Canada Cabana. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, shout out to, I can't remember who my old dealer was. Um, <laughs> but I was like, I smoked a joint, I was crossing Spadina, and mm. I had uh, my, my, CD, my like Sony <laughs> Discman or yeah, whatever. Yeah, the Discman, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, with my like blue bottom 
CDR burn of this. And I remember hearing cause equals time as I wow. crossed the dyno going, fuck, this is, this yeah. is actually really good. And then by the time I got to this tune, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? This record's amazing. Like, and it's, it's all bangers. It's I still album. love this album. Um, Oh. And uh, also, well, then we were there was two two good components in this because uh, Kieran and me and uh, and my friend Stuart Berman, I think we're and, the, and our friend Matt Galloway, now CBC Matt Galloway, and we all wrote pop, we all wrote like really glowing reviews of this. And another Toronto music journalist wrote a piece in another publication saying the only reason people like this record is because they're friends with the band. <laughs> and then on who New, was I? I, I uh, Come on, you can. Uh, what are you afraid of? No, we're buds. What are yeah. you afraid? Of? Oh, it's okay. But then that person, you can look will, it up. That person it. will own Do it. Do a search. That person uh, will own it. He's way more successful than me. Um, but then on New Year's Day, why would oh, Brad Wheeler write such a thing? <laughs> That's right. It was Brad. Um, then on a uh, colleague. Um, then on New Year's Day, uh, the, I guess after the September, whenever that came out. Uh, there was a, a, a like a 9.7 review in Pitchfork that just fucking catapulted this record and Metric and Stars and yeah. then fucked like it really like shout out to Michael Barclay and his uh, his book on the uh, the scene but it was just bananas absolutely the, like it really exploded so yeah, that was kind of vindication for all of us but also uh, uh, Kevin Drew who's a, again a friend uh, we he's a standing agreement that if Gail and I who've been together for 20 years ever get married he has to perform this at our wedding. Uh, he's agreed to it. But I'd that's, get married just for that. Like, you know. But this was like the soundtrack <laughs> to my, I guess, uh, long-suffering romantic partnership. So there you go. A bit, a bit of sap for you. Uh, I love that story absolutely. And uh, yeah, this was the the album, man. It was so great, and uh, sounds great in the cans. It's got that it lush indie vibe going there. All right, it's gonna ride us into the next jam. It's been a long time. I don't even remember what any of these are. It's been literally been years, Ben. I don't like any of this music anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. It is what it is. Oh. Let's see if you can even name the tune on your stuff. This was my most listened to tune of last year. Like, not this year, but last year. 2022. So there. <laughs> In since I'll give you this. I'm jolting your legs Just before you fall asleep I'm the bumps on your skin On your skin I'm scared too This tune is just fucking bonkers Joy Division in there. Oh, you can hear so much goodness in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, talk to me. Tell us who this is and uh, talk to me about this. Yeah, like this, uh, there's, a, there's a few like young bands in Toronto that just like it drive me giddy with excitement and the Bonnie Trash. They're from Guelph. So, sorry, that's my Toronto centric. Close enough. Uh, yeah, close enough on the like. We claim I, Guelph, man. We've been doing that forever. I think it's fine. I think Guelph is its own. <laughs> It's like a Toronto Hamlet over there. Yeah, it's its own, it's its own <laughs> republic. I like well. Anyway, Bonnie Trash, uh, Emma and Sarah are twins uh, uh, into horror movies. Uh, obviously, a little bit goth, and uh, just a fucking ferocious live band. And that's kind of how I they they sent me a when they they, they put like a, like a cassette a few years ago. And uh, look, Ben, I have cassettes in the yeah, studio, yeah. Okay. and it like called Ezzelini's Dead, and it was about this like. 
Italian dictator who was into the occult and maybe cannibalism, and with recordings of their Nona, who's now departed, um, talking about this dictator. And now Shout out to Ridley Funeral Home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Bring it back. This album, although this isn't on the new record, but they, the album they just put out, my only, my only complaint about it is this song, is, Shades of You, isn't on it, uh, is one of the best albums you didn't hear last year, and just fucking amazing. Funny trash. I love having people like you who, uh, who know their shit, listen to a lot of new stuff. You come over, you tell me all the great fucking bands I'm missing out on. And then I can do a little catch up, a little mop up. Oh, no, these, man. This, these guys are, these gals are amazing. It's so good live. I went to see them on Halloween. What, what, what venue? Uh, some weird church hall. Cool. Yeah, made it more goth. Hey, Ben, before I get to this next jam here, we'll let Shades of You uh, linger in the background. Let this is the part here. Like, this sounds like Joy Division. Like, with a bit of Sabbath in there. Shout out to the world's biggest uh, fan, David Ryder, your old desk mate, right? Also Joy Division fan. Yeah, that's what I mean. The uh, world's biggest Joy Division fan, David Ryder. I'm supposed to get beers of David Ryder and my uh, painter, Chris Brown, at uh, Danny Graves. He, he runs a motel in Parkdale. The, the, the Parkdale, the motel, I can't remember that. It's got a basic name. It's called the Parkdale Motel or something like that. The motel? Okay, anyway. <laughs> Anyway, uh, we're, we want to like stuff. we want to do that. But okay, before I get to the next jam, okay, can you be very specific with people? Where exactly is this record store that you're hanging uh, working at? Sorry, five days a week. I I I am now at the helm at the the Cops Records. It's been like Martin's been in business since I know, I know. You're West End people like me just need to know exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on the two hundred nine Danforth. Two hundred nine Danforth. Two hundred nine Danforth Avenue. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, and, you'll find me. And what are pricing. your typical hours? I am there pretty much all day, every day, 11 to 7, five days a week. 11 to 7. So, so theoretically, yeah, come can, by, if somebody deal. wants a, uh, a hug and a selfie, is that available from you, Ben Rainer? If, they're, if, they, the if they know, if, yeah, well, let's say they know you're an FOTM. Like, is that some kind of a, a code word that lets you know they listen to you on Toronto Mike, they can't be all bad? Yes, I suppose so. Okay. <laughs> I will sit for a selfie. During this episode, make sure, please, that I tell this story about the David Kynes boxes, okay? We're going to get to another great Ben Rainer jam here, but don't let me forget to tell the David Kynes boxes stories. Here we go! Talk to us, Ben Rayner. Casper Skulls. I don't know anybody Casper who knows. Casper Skulls. I, I like they are one of my favorite, probably one of my favorite bands ever. I know it embarrasses them because they're friends of mine. They call me, Mel calls me their band dad, <laughs> which I, I take as a compliment, even though it makes me feel very old, but I'm just absolutely evangelical about these guys. I Listen to that song. Listen to that chorus. Oh like, no like doubt. It, like so give that chorus Toronto another. Band? What are we t- yeah, they're from here. Well, I like Mel and Neil are from uh, Sudbury, or at least she's from outside Sudbury. And this is off the album called Mercy Works that was their first full length. They just did a new, another one last year called Knows No Kindness. That's ridiculous. It like talks about Mel Melanie. You know there, there's a lot of no, no, no. Uh, that chorus. I'm Listen to that chorus. That's 
a hit. Like, I don't understand what's wrong with it. Well, you know, it's more of what's wrong with radio. Yeah. Like, uh, where can that be a hit in 2023? I mean, you're hoping Indy 88 plays it, I guess. Yeah. Now, and that's uh, the new album's a little less, like, raucous than this one. Although that was, this one was kind of, Mercy Works was kind of going yeah. in the new, like, weird folk punk direction. But the album's, like, it, it was no kindness is crazy. It talks about, I, I didn't know this. I've known them for a few years now. And Melanie uh, Tempier, the lead singer, when she was like eight, witnessed her neighbor shoot her best friend's father in their oh backyard. God. And so the whole record's about this like, weird onk. It's got a lynch quality. It's And again, nobody paid any attention to it, but they're, they're just a fantastic band. One of my favorite live bands again, too. Okay, so let's take radio out of it because radio is dying a long, slow, painful death. Okay, let's move aside radio, okay? Uh, we just discussed how the alt media has evaporated. Like, we already, we know. what. Where the hell are we going to learn about Casper Skulls? Like, we have to hope Ben Rayner algori- has to come on a fucking local podcast with, like, like that's just, like, a free for all, and he's given room to talk and say whatever the fuck he wants. Like this is it. You're now telling people who are dialed in about Casper Skulls. Well, it's it's weird, man. Doing doing like say I did a piece on the the new Headstones record, which is amazing. Okay. Um, a couple of weeks ago, and just you know you you do a little preliminary research. So you punch in the album name. That's like Headstones, at Flight Risk. Yeah, Hugh Dillon. That's a cool name, right? Yeah. And like and then. Now what comes up for anything is basically like the one sheet, the press release for the album that's been (laughs) reprinted in a bunch of blogs Mm -hmm. and maybe one or two interviews by like, like someone who can't write at CTV, someone who the CTV one, by the way, that I like sourced when I was doing this, Hugh Dillon piece spelled his name wrong. Wow. See, this I'm actually, my blood is boiling hearing you tell this story because of how hard I tried in the past to get Hugh Dillon on Toronto Mike. And I had to go through this layer of PR where at the last minute, I can show you my fucking notes. I've got my homework. I do my homework, brother. I have my notes. I'm ready to go. I'm, it's literally recording day. Hugh Dillon in the basement. And the PR person wrote me and said, I think he, he got, he had, he had another thing he had to do and he couldn't make it. Like it was like, like never happened. This never happened. It pissed me off so much I wrote about it on TorontoMike.com because this whole PR layer, like if it was fucking Hugh and I can talk directly. Like Hugh, Hugh let, let's work this out. I hear Hugh's a good guy. I want Hugh Dillon in the basement. I would promote the shit out of his new fucking album. I got a lot of fucking listeners. I also know most of his publicists. Though. Why don't? Yeah, I can give. I'll give you a name if you want I afterwards. Uh, I I even uh, that, that that one stuck out because <laughs> I, I was. Would love, I would love to come down and hang out with you and do this together. I we're, would be game. Are you kidding me? I'd be a hundred percent game to have are, you, Ben Rayner, co-hosting on Friday. This Friday coming up, there's a guy named Richard Griffin. He wrote for your paper, the Toronto yep. Star. Do you know Richard? Yeah, I know who Richard is. Well, I, I don't know him. No, I know who he is. Different department, but you must have bumped yeah. into him at like a Christmas uh, party or two. Yeah. So then Richard leaves the Star. To work for, he works for the Blue Jays, and he was just let go. But this Friday, we're talking on a Tuesday night here. On Friday. Richard Griffin is coming over to the studio you're in right now to sit down in that seat. And my special guest co-host for that episode is Mark Hebsher. I would have Hugh Dillon over, Ben Rayner in the co-hosting seat, and I would love it. Uh, Make some, text really him. Fun. Hugh Dillon and this I is are your project. Alike. We relate on a number of disturbing levels. Let's do it. I'll talk to him. Do your best. <laughs> you, know, you need a horse to water. You can't make him drink. Okay. All right. Love it. Okay, now I know about Casper Skulls. I'm learning so oh, much today. Dude, they're one of my favorite. Like, legit, maybe one of my favorite bands ever. Wow. How? Okay, see, this is bugs me that I don't know these bands that are fucking Ben Rayner's favorite bands ever. Like, I need to, I need you to educate me here. So, there's so other stuff that's more modern. I'm going to go a little old school and then come back to the more modern. You ready for me to kick it old school? Uh, kick it. Can you kick it? I just brought a Kathy Dennis 12 inch home from work two days ago.
Minogue. I love Colleen Minogue more than life itself. One of the perks, actually, of, of <laughs> working for Cops Records for the past couple of years, because they, they have an old raver and lapsed DJ on staff. Uh, so I, I get to go through all the 12-inch singles. So I have accumulated all the Colleen <laughs> singles. Uh, dating back to like locomotion over the almost I'm not all the way there but I'm I'm, I'm getting close oh my god and the, the that's on fever and by the way when I blurted out oh my god I brought home a Kathy Dennis 12 inch uh, yesterday Kathy Dennis wrote this who was kind of like almost there like pop star in the 80s early 90s sure uh, has become a writer but uh, Miss Locomotion herself had to, to bring this to the charts the top of the charts this is like Fever and it's but the new one the new Kylie Disco is almost as good as Fever I will say I say this as a Kylie fanatic I just yeah this is a perfect pop tune yeah no like, absolutely it's, and it's, it's caught a like great the pop song post raves like Geist all that yeah. shit you know what I mean and I was, you know, it's good to mix it up a little bit, right? Like, uh, I was kind of... I listen to Kylie Minogue more than almost anything else. <laughs> I was up last night making a girly pop playlist. When that, what does that entail? Is that just like a playlist, like literally a digital playlist, or do you make mixtapes? I just sit, well, I, I used to. I used to woo ladies with mixtapes yes. back in the day. So this Jim Shedden yesterday, we were, it was all like a like a trip, man. Like zines and mixtapes, like a total trip. But, uh, I have I used to make mixtapes too. From when I was a like, we, we have a box of them at our place where I designed artwork and all this yeah. shit. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, me too, brother. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah me That's too. Why we're friends. That's why I brought out the old. This guy's out of retirement here. I'm gonna <laughs> digitize some old tapes here, but uh, I'm pointing to my cassette, my Sony cassette player on my. Uh, Even when I started like mixing records, I would always dump at the tape, not to. People are burning it, or like, like creating sound files. No, well into the 2000s, just like hooked into my old realistic dual cassette player. Okay, so we're talking about like a, a medium. We're talking about cassette tapes here. And I have now, like, I'm more likely to hear a cassette tape because of this thing here than I am. Like, I can't play a DVD right now in this house. My like, CD player died of neglect. I went to play Polly Dark Side of the, Dark Side of the Fucking Moon. <laughs> she was talking about it, and I, 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 I could my, my CD it's player wouldn't side, open. Died of neglect. It Maybe it killed open. itself. That's terrible. Now, can you play a DVD right now in your house? We have the several iterations of the PlayStation. Okay, that'll do it. Okay, yeah. I never had. And one. I bought okay. her vintage video games for Christmas. So, do you know the name David Kynes? Why do I know the name David? He Kynes? worked at Much Music. Like not oh, in the yeah, glory like days, but in, yeah, he was yeah. yes, music director. Uh, he was running the show there. Oh, I know David. Yes, and then he now he's with Hollywood Suites. There's no much music, I don't think. Anyway, that's why I have all this shit. Not shit, but I have all this stuff because the other day, I think Friday, uh, a, a young lady uh, dropped off two boxes for me and some some pictures and stuff. And I, you know, the pictures, oh, I'm looking at the pictures. I hung one up around the corner. When you go to the washroom, you'll see this punch much picture I just hung up from David I'm going Kynes. to the washroom right now. <laughs> well, when you go to the washroom, I'll kick out a jam and I'll get you, uh, do you want an IPA? I'm good, man. Okay, you're good, good, okay. No, and I'm, I'm going to the washroom right now. <laughs> oh, in your pants. <laughs> I get it now. All yeah, right, so this story, which is boring me too. High route, yeah. So two boxes. So I don't know what's in the boxes. What's in the box? So I actually recorded here, I recorded myself opening the box and finding what's inside because I had no idea. And uh, then I share those videos and I told any FOTM who's watching those videos could say, I want that, I want that because it's just a bunch of DVDs and CDs. And a whole bunch of good stuff has already been given away. Like I've been biking stuff to people. I've been having people pick it up. Like I've been basically, most of my time now is managing like how to get all these goods to the FOTMs. It's all free. I'm not asking any money for anything. Uh, just be good to, to each other. But I guess uh, if you wanted to take a look at the remainder bin, you might see a DVD you want to bring home. You know what is the great lost treasure of what? much music? Are what? the those interstitials and ads? I think Carl. I think Carl Davis was his last name. I, I like like I loved them so much. Remember the really like absurd kind of much music? Like they'd have time wasters basically, or like ads, and it'd just be some guy yelling for no reason I, I wish i could describe them better like, they're like absurd but if it, his name was carl like carl davis something. uh and i they gave me a reel of his stuff oh. one time because i loved it so much and i my friend mima was working as their publicist then um yeah. 
I mean, look, it's like I did a piece on him. Carl, much music, okay. weird video or something, uh, if you're on your computer. But, oh, my God, they were the best thing ever. And I only have it on VHS, and they're gone. They're gone. They're just I utterly absurd. I can't believe they got made. And he made a bunch of them. So, finally, I conned the star into doing a piece. Okay. And he and I just got shit-faced <laughs> at the old Friar and Furkin across from much music one day. And I wrote a piece about it just because I wanted to meet him because they yeah. were so good. Well, you still have the tape, or is it... Uh, I have the VHS tape. I okay. should bring it over. We what, should find Carl. What, what we do is that we get that to the great Ed Conroy from Red Show, yeah. Ontario. And, uh, in fact, yeah, and then we can have a field day with that, with oh the Red Show, God, Ontario so empire good. behind us here. Gosh. All right, let's 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 kick out another jam and keep that nostalgia coming. Uh, we're nostalgia merchants on this program. I wonder who... That's an interesting sound because the waveform is fat, but <laughs> all right. It's like a dog whistle. I can't hear it. to hear you Ben Rayner talk about this great jam but there's breaking news at live.torontomike.com where we're live streaming right now Uncle Bobby Cox has breaking Carl Davis news if that is his name he ran on stage during a Matthew Good Band performance at the MMVAs one year are you aware of this Ben Rayner are you aware of this and he has he sent me uh, the great uh, Uncle Bobby Cox who's a real identity I will uh, I will not uh, out him here but the, here, I'm going to play this. This is going to be awful, maybe, but let's hear this for a second. We'll come back to the <laughs> And jam. interrupting a heartfelt song about letting your dead friend in heaven. Oh, my body God. In order to communicate. You know, with I'm so sorry. Should no, I'd I... like Carl would appreciate that. Okay. And actually, the Louis would appreciate that. Too. I think Justin does even now. So, is that him? Yeah, yeah. Smashing Gentleman. That's amazing work. That's the the lost stuff, just really stupid, like 10 second much music interstitial. Yeah. A genius. Wow. So, Uncle Bobby Cox of the Big Find, and I do apologize profusely to the Luyas. Am I saying Luyas. that right? Another, you're digging up a lot of my. They, these are like legit fave bands. Like I read Casper's, your mind, man. But like Casper <laughs> Skulls, Luyas. Uh, so I love there another great live. I think, for me, it's like I need to be. Con- I love the records, but I'm do a you, live music guy. The, here's the trap I fall into: when I see a band live, 
I fall in love. I think they're fantastic. Like, don't you think bands sound better live so that uh, every time you see a band live, it's amazing? But yeah, like my favorite band, like someone like the Louis. But then all the bands are amazing. Yeah, but yeah. Nah. No, I mean, there's no shame in it, but it is, uh, I fall for this too. Like, I'll see a band live and I'll go, oh my God, this band was amazing. And maybe they were amazing. But how could every band, do I only see amazing bands? I I see like probably what like less than one percent of the bands you see, so it's I was a gonna say, smaller I, sample size. Yeah. You learn to judge on a sliding scale. Well, I'm tired. <laughs> and, I'm tired and old. But I like if I like a bit, my, my I probably told I tell the story yeah. to everybody. I love a place to bury strangers. They're like my favorite live band, extant. Uh, and uh, I went to see them eight times in three days at South by Southwest a few years ago because it was the first year I wasn't, I was on my own dime. I didn't have like three deadlines a day. I was like, fuck it. I'm going to do yeah. what I want to do. And I love them. Steven, their manager was like, I didn't even go to eight shows. And I'm like, I would have gone to all 14 of their shows wow. in three days. And what band is this again? A Place to Bury Strangers. Look at you. A Place to Bury Strangers. We've, I think we've dug some yeah. places. A APTVS. This might of, be a good chance for me to let. Whose the, current lineup yeah. might be the best they've ever had. Okay. If you're hearing Ben Rayner on Toronto Mike right now and you're like, uh, what was that? Thing Ben was talking about earlier, where he said he 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 shared something for the first time on Toronto Mike, and like that's that was quite the story. I'm so glad you're here, like Ben. That story where you you know you contemplated ending your life and you had a plan and you were going to execute this plan. It's a poor choice of words, but you didn't do it, man. Yeah. Thank you for not killing yourself. Can yeah, I look well, in the eyes and tell you that? Yeah, well, I yeah, thank yeah. you. It's, it's no big deal to not kill yourself. No big deal? Okay. It's pretty, pretty easy you to make not it sound kill so, yourself. You make it sound so easy, Ben. Okay. Yeah. But, well, whatever. Go, you, go. you know what? You know, it's, everyone gets, a lot, everyone gets depressed and it's not a, it's not a big deal. Just fucking, like, it's well, the, talking lock, about the locking, helps, the locking, right? the locking it away does not help. Right. Talk That's about it. it uh, just, get it out. Yeah. Like, you know? It's like the moment you just say to somebody, I think I need some help. It's like, it actually like, it's not to sound cliched, but it's yeah. just like, just say it. Cause I felt like I've done there. I doesn't work for me uh, at all. Cause I, I, I'm, I think half the reason I get like this is because I'm dwelling on everything in my head, but like actually letting it out in the open, like with like, honestly sitting down with you, that that was the first time I, I talked to anybody really in a long time. Uh, when well, we let's sat down let the, the people backyard. know. They can hear that. Like we, yeah. we, we record. Did you know we recorded that? Okay, so yeah. it's episode four seventy six. Okay, that was without my consent. <laughs> you sat in front of that microphone and but, you thought yeah. it was just to be look cool. Okay, yeah. June thirteenth. I, I thought this was for, yeah. oh, June 13, 2019, Man, that was the before times. Man, that like, was in the beginning of. The, <laughs> so. Well, no, because twenty twenty is when everything hits the the shit hits oh, the yeah. fan in March twenty twenty. So this is June twenty nineteen. So. Yeah, this was like I would say the the Raptors. Maybe they they maybe they just won the NBA championship or yeah maybe we just had the parade or something. So go back in time. Listen to 476 with Ben Rayner. But hold on. Wait, there's more. Because you came back here. I want to get this right here because we've had several visits and I want to get this right. So Ben Rayner, I'm going to load this up. By the way, do you consume cannabis, Ben Rayner? Uh, on the way here. You know what? Const you're, if you're constantly. buying, I'm telling you right now. How long have you known? I know, me? I know, I know. Come on, I'm doing. That's, but I see. I'm, I don't take meds. I'm for plugging my a depression. sponsor here. I know. Ben, you know I that. see you. I see you, your. <laughs> Poster can of cabana. So, and you, do you really have unbeatable prices? <laughs> they won't be undersold on cannabis or cannabis accessories. Go to canacabana.com. There's over 140 locations across the country. The second visit from Ben Rayner, I just want to say that's episode 673, and that was in uh, June 2020. So, like a year later, you came back. Look, we were socially distanced for the photo. That's how scared we were. Look, I, I love I it when I see scared. these photos. I guess I was. I'm, I'm the you know Omega what? Man. I don't live alone. This is the truth, right? So, like, I don't want Monica at that time, June 2020. Okay, you got to remember June 2020. I don't think it's fair to Monica, like, for her, like, we're so close, and then she's afraid I'm bringing COVID in the house. And <laughs> I'm bringing 25 people into the house a week. You know, we are not an island here. Okay, so quickly. Then you came back to kick out the jams. Uh, on July 30th, 2020. So we didn't wait so long for See, us to do it. And another backyard. backyard hangs. Yeah, it's all backyard hangs. And then you kicked out more jams on in October 2020. I think that might have been in the basement. Uh, that yep. looks like Halloween stuff in the background here. I think that was outside and quite cold and windy. 
Okay, 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 yes. Okay. You feared for your gear, if you know what I mean. Right, okay. So, let's get back to these jams. They're not going to kick themselves out. Uh, here we go. little build-up here. I feel I should speak to it. Pan flute's always a good touch. Hit the post. Thanks for hanging with us on a Tuesday night. Ben Rayner in the TMDS studio, kicking out the jams. and join our GLB. Peace and love, FOTMs. Here we go! From the marriage of the moon and a crocodile. Doom Squad. Doom Squad. Okay, talk I to love. me about Doom Squad. Another Toronto. Although I think they're splintered between Montreal and here. Uh, three siblings, two gals, one guy. Awesome people. Another of my legit, like, favorite recent bands. You've done your work, Michael. Well, you did the work, actually. I just copied it. Yeah, they're like, I, I, like Doom Squad don't sound like anybody else they're on their own weird planet and the the record this one do i hear on. throat singing what am i hearing uh you'll hear everything they actually yeah, opened for tanya taga uh the yeah. inner throat like she hates being called a throat singer but for lack of a better word so they toured with uh tanya uh taga um on right like two albums ago um and picked up a lot of tanya's spark uh like they're is, like, like, they're amazing. You got to listen to this whole record, though. You get, like they're they're an album band. Even you know this song, which I don't know. I mean, it depends how much you have to say, but this thing's over ten minutes long. Yeah, it's a chant. It's an incantation. I once here's a good story. I I love them. We my a uh, couple of friends of mine and I like to go uh, back in country c- hiking and camping. I, I'm shocked you no, like to hike. <laughs> yes, this is no <laughs> secret. Uh, I was playing. We were on a lake with three or four lakes back. We hiked because it was still frozen in Algonquin Park. Uh, and I, my buddy Jesse and I, always tried to approximate the old, like, was Barry Station, the, the, the dock, and thus make, like, Chilliwack and, and April, April Wine. Wine yeah, I was going to say. But yeah. we ran out uh, in the middle of the woods, and it was like the moon, Mars, Venus. I want to say Saturn. Anyway, three planets, a moon with a, a full moon with a ring around it on a frozen lake. And I was playing a Doom Squad track, and they'll love this. I, they know this story. And there's a tune on this record where, a, like, a prayer bell starts sounding, and wolves howled back at it from across a frozen lake, what? illuminated by Are a you full sure you moon. Tripping balls. I uh, was, I but remember. but <laughs> we had it was like mer- like three three planets. Uh, the moon with a ring around it. Doom Squad playing. A prayer bell chimes in one tune and 
because they were howling at the full moon. Yeah, no, it was like it's like a life experience. But that's kind of the shit they make. Like it all sounds like that. They've gotten a bit more dancey now. They actually, <laughs> Trevor jokes that they wanted me to be their advisor on the second album because it was uh, obsessed with UFOs <laughs> and pyramids and stuff. So I was going to be there. And they recorded it in New Mexico. So they they wanted me to be their UFO advisor. Okay, on that note, true story. Since true there's like weird story. still six minutes left, so I'm going to let this simmer in yes. the background. Uh, you Holy did talk man. about this in your first visit, but remind us again about your uh, like your legit belief in uh, unidentified flying objects. It's not a belief thing. They it's like uh, it's like or UAP, unidentified aerial phenomena, as it's right. coded now, so you can't. So it's not a matter of belief. These are things that show up on the radar. We have and uh, knock proof. Down, no, knock down trees, uh, burn circles in the ground. Whether it's a, I've made the speech on here before, a naturally occurring weather phenomenon that manifests itself as a solid metal object that can move around at speeds approaching the speed of light or not. It's a thing that we haven't bothered to explore. And it's like, it's fucking crazy to me that people don't ask us. It's like, oh no, that can't exist. So anything that's beyond the laws of physics can't exist. It's like, well, maybe you haven't studied physics enough. You know what I mean? So I, that's my thing. It's not so, a matter so of belief. Why, it's just like, why uh, like, is it because we don't have that video or whatever, which will go viral? We have a lot of those videos. A lot of those films. But they always mysteriously disappear, even though nobody really knows what they're like. It's, I mean, a lot of it's bullshit. Like, I think a lot of this fucking conspiracy stuff and cover-up stuff is actually just a smokescreen for military organizations to pretend that they know more than they know, so they sow the seeds of disinformation. Right. But if you look at, like, a serious scientist like Jacques Vallée, who's studied it 60 years now, it's like, I don't know what they're covering up. They're covering up something, but he's someone who rejects, like... The quote unquote extra test, extraterrestrial, the extra testicle hypothesis, <laughs> the extraterrestrial <laughs> hypothesis. But he like and 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 puts forth ideas like this is an extra dimensional control system that's been like exerting its influence over mankind since a long time. But nobody wants to delve into those questions. But it's a deep rabbit hole. And if you start reading this like legit science on it, it's fucked up. That's why I like it. I just like I, no. I, I do. I get. So, did you spend many nights listening to like Art Bell and? Uh, no, because a lot of that is bull. Like a lot of yeah, that is the disinformation funk. bullshit. Right. But if you go, like, I have a huge collection of like, uh, like, very rare and out of print UFO books. I picked up all. I roll into town. I strip that used bookshop, and there was quite a bit of like sound science being done on it until it was like obfuscated by myth. And disinformation in like the the, the late late sixties or yeah. but there's actually like good early science on it. It just does go, it has reached no conclusion. That's the thing. Yeah. It's like I just want people to ask the question: What are these things? Have you got any new ink since you were last here? I am getting my a uh, picture of an alien that my daughter drew me for Father's Day. As soon as my tattoo artist Emma comes back from Dartmouth this month, it's amazing. Okay. Yeah, like it's, it's. I would get a tattoo that my daughter drew. Like that's a whole different category that should. She drew me one. I'm committed to it. And Emma's a good artist. I would get a tattoo that your daughter drew. Okay, that's Emma James tattoo. Look it up. Uh, she's great. Okay, okay, and she's in Dartmouth now. This tattoo yeah, is. So she's back in January. You might be able to book an appointment. Well, first time for everything. You know, I gotta at some point. Oh, you know what I, I need? I need a tattoo <laughs> sponsor, and that'll be it. It's like okay, let let's get this done here. You know. So I love your passion for the UF, UFO uh, information, etc. And I totally get that it gets gets kind of squished up with all this uh, phony baloney stuff, and then it gets all of it gets like the baby goes out with the bathwater because it's all gonna get discredited. Well, and it's I, like so, when, when that like a dude from Blink One Eighty Two suddenly becomes the voice of ufology. It's like no, right. this, oh. but they, it's it's that. But it's so basic. Can I interest you in a DVD of Blink-182 Greatest Hits? You couldn't. Uh, no? Because that's uh, <laughs> I mean, I, like, in the, one of the uh, Kinds uh, boxes. Uh, a lot of great stuff. And there's, look, I Joe, like Josie's on this, all the small things. I will things. not go to him, but I don't want to First date, it. feeling this, I miss you. Okay. But one thing I want to say while we still have a little bit of uh, Doom Squad here. Uh, oh, what? You got to listen to the whole piece, Mike. <laughs> I'm digging it. I'm and digging it. Drugs. I'm digging they it. envisioned this record as like a, the perfect cottage country rave. So 
Do you know the next one was a rave at the pyramids. Do not consume so. sober is what you're telling me. But okay, at least I have some Great Lakes in me. But it the problem is the people who kind of get into this world, then kind of they some of these people, not people like you, but some people then are into next thing you know they're into QAnon. And yeah, yeah, it's all the same. So bullshit. it's uh, like it's I, I'm not calling it a gateway drug, but it's like the people who are into this are not the people I want. Like I don't want to be in any club that would have them as a member. Yeah, but you have to remember that like the term conspiracy theory was basically invented by intelligence agencies to discredit <laughs> conspir- conspiracy theory. Like, they populate the CIA and the, the DIA and stuff. In this. So now okay. I sound like one of them, so well, Let me ask I'm you a few, quick, a few basic questions. Nothing too too scary here, but do you believe a man landed on the moon in 69? I do. When I, okay. I, but there is credible evidence that they were warned away <laughs> later on. But you believe they landed there? I do believe they okay, landed Okay, okay, okay. Um, was there? A, what do you think? Do you think Lee Harvey Oswald uh, acted alone in uh, killing John F. Kennedy? I do not. <laughs> You're not alone, <laughs> my, there, bro. My authoritative voice. And th- I I don't care. I like UFOs. I don't give a shit about JFK. I didn't know him. <laughs> Ooh, that's your heart rate right now, Ben Rainer. Best techno track ever. It'll mix with oh, that. another long one too. I'm just checking the timestamp. By the way, Doom Squad was 13 minutes. Woo! Strap yourself in. Wait, cheers to you, Ben. So you cracked open another one there. Cheers to you, buddy. Don't worry, everybody. Ben's not driving home tonight. I stole his car keys and his car. <laughs> I'm gonna sleep in the backyard. I'd find space for you inside. I know oh. you'd rather be out I'd there. Rather, I'd rather be out there with the raccoons. <laughs> There's foxes and stuff. Lots of skunks. There we go. Wow. I want to bike to this song. I love biking to music. The best type of track ever. Where is it from? Do you know? Okay. Or no, no. I'll, I'll look it up. Talk it up. Talk it up. Uh, I just, I don't know, like, 
it's, it's like I'm a huge like I said I Richie Houghton who is probably the best techno DJ producer for my money on the planet from Windsor Ontario across the river from the birthplace of techno in Detroit Michigan and I, I feel like, like I remember going to the stars is like 98 99 to the first Detroit electronic music festival which is like a free thing they did downtown before it kind of gentrified up to the level it was today and Derek May, Kevin Saunderson, and Juan Atkins, who are all the guys who invented techno in Detroit, let Richie Houghton from Windsor, this kid about a little, little bit older than me, a little bit older than you, uh, close. You know what I mean? Because they knew they couldn't go on after him. And he's still... Uh, I keep the oh man, it's one of the best times. Of, like, totally... Post last lockdown, I guess, played a, a dirty warehouse party in the stockyards. It was just like 500 of us in an unventilated, windowless warehouse with one sad air conditioning unit sawing away in, in, at the top. And, and this kind of beat down, beat down, beat down. And it's just, I don't know, just for like techno fans of a certain vintage in Canada, we just love Houghton and, he, and the, he's the best and I, I, I think as much as his career has progressed and grown I, like he's he's filthy rich and living in a village in Portugal now um, he's just like he I don't know he somehow managed to like rock star early Detroit techno and, and Chicago acid house while still making completely uncompromising music Okay, I, I looked at, like the the latest thing he's put. It's not even him. Chili Gonzalez, the uh, fights producer, classical music, musician from here, uh, got a hold of his album "Consumed" from 1998. Just right about when I met Ridge. Um, one of the best records ever. It's just basically like walking through a tunnel where someone is thumping on an oil drum for an hour. So. Uh, Chili Gonzalez got a hold of it this year and added like piano and stuff and finally got through uh, Tiga, a DJ producer from Montreal, to remix it with all the piano and stuff. And you're like, these incredibly weird insular works uh, are still finding an audience. You know what I mean? Like, here's a classical musician 20 years later going, I don't know this album. Holy shit. Because there's so many empty spaces. So that's why, like, Spastic, as someone who can hold it down pretty good on the turntables if I have to. Uh, mixing record. Spastic will mix with fucking anything, right? It's just pure rhythm. So if you know it, you can drop chunks of that into anything and make it awesome. I don't know. It's my favorite techno track. Okay, the, the long speech. Yeah, no, I love it. We had the time for that speech. Don't worry. But uh, Plastic Man is the... Uh, I got... Uh, see? I got two of those, baby. One on either oh, arm. Oh, fuck. Which is fucking weird because we're friends. See, Who gives and you know, shit? now that I'm out, we Who, have one to go. Who here. gives a shit? No, well, it's love only it. skin. <laughs> can only be embarrassed so many times. So, Ben, now that I've, I'm draining the swamp, I've got one more to go. And then, you know, that long list you gave me that I just... This is, I think, our third or fourth time I've tapped into it. It's depleted. I'll send you another. You're gonna need to send me another brain dump of your jams, actually. So, here, we're gonna let Plastic Man here roll us into the final jam I have for you, Ben. I've been uh, once again thoroughly enjoying this. So glad we can make this happen again, and we're gonna, you know, it won't be the last time you. I sense that. You visit Toronto, Mike. That's for sure.
Talk to me, Ben Rayner. Dog day. I fucking love dog day. Dog day. They're like, well, like I, I have this thing in my like my house, and uh, Gail knows it. My long suffering partner. Just like I'm like, this is one of my projects. Dog day is one of my projects. Like I'm one of two bands, Casper Skulls included. But I think a friend of mine is signed purely because I love them so much. To zero. Uh, financial or popular return but I appreciate it and if he's listening he knows <laughs> um, why like they're like a Halifax kind of like I don't know like you, you've you heard you've played a lot of my favorite bands tonight these are this is distilled to my some of my favorite Canadian bands wow. I probably typed in the email this is one of my favorite Canadian bands but um, you also know me and we've probably played Dog Day on here before but uh I, I don't know. They're like one of the great unknowns here. And then they had babies and disappeared. And then they came back and made a record. And then COVID happened. So I don't know what's going on. But Seth has also made some wicked uh, horror movies. Seth Smith. Um, it's the most recent one called. You can help me here. Searcher. Low Life? Low life and then the never. crescent the crescent holy shit so the guy who made the lighthouse uh who also did the witch names the crescent as a huge influence on the lighthouse and that's my boy seth from like dartmouth his third feature film is tin can they're so creepy Okay. But he also makes amazing music. But I had no with idea. I had no idea. Uh, so I had no idea the front man for Dog Day was this uh, director. Wow. Okay. Seth, yeah. No. He did, he 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 and a, my buddy Matt did like a for a couple of years a film festival in Halifax of just weird shit. And I was very lucky enough to be one of the three adjudicators one year. I got to see like what we do in the shadows and a couple of things before they were things. And I, I'm just like, I'm so glad they brought me into their world. But Dog Day is one of the absolute best bands nobody has heard. Like the, every single record is different. Uh, there's one called Night Group. There's one called Concentration. Um, they're all great. They're and this great. one was uh, Hell on Earth. Dude, this was fucking awesome. Like, uh, like, think about it. I'm like telling people, yeah, you know, Ben Rayner's going to come over on, uh, what is this, Tuesday night. We're going to drink some Great Lakes beer. We're going to kick out like nine of his favorite songs of all time. And we're just going to shoot the shit. Can't think of a better night. Those were some of my absolute favorite <laughs> Canadian bands. Like, I, 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 again, I will use the phrase evangelical about those bands. So good choice. I'm, I'm just happy someone got to hear them. One person, your one listener, my he, mom. Is, mom will be like, would, I love the dog days. Well, I hope your mom listens. And uh, would Gail ever listen to a uh, Ben Rayner on Toronto Mike uh, experience? No. No, definitely Gail not. Gail would never she, listen to she, she, she listens to the Ben Rayner experience all day. That's true. She's like, I don't dun, need to dun, dun, tune dun. in this idiot's podcast. By the way, we you didn't kick out any Watchmen jams, but uh, in addition to being a great drummer, I just want to let everybody know if you have a real estate question of any sorts, any real estate questions or drumming questions for that matter, Sammy.Cohn, K-O-H-N, at properlyhomes.ca. Write Sammy. He'll get back to you right away. He's a knowledgeable guy. He's uh, in the top 1% of realtors in Toronto. And you, Ben, are in the top 1% of Toronto mic guests. Thanks again for doing this. That's me kissing you through the mic. <laughs> I hope you don't have COVID. <laughs> Your mic does now. <laughs> I think I'm immune. I had it in early December. I feel like I'm the Omega Man because everyone around me has had it a bunch of times and I've escaped it. Oh, so I was I making that same speech like a little over a month ago, but I don't make that speech anymore. <laughs> yeah, about well, it. there you go. I've learned my lesson. I'll see you in hell. <laughs> <laughs> Dog day. And that brings us to the end of our 1,185th show. I'm actually, I'm actually confirming that's right. No. Yes. I told this to Ed Keenan. My fives and sixes look the same now when they're in the small font. That's because uh, you're old. I know, but I have glasses here. But I don't want you to think less of me, Ben, so I didn't put them on. That's why i got to start wearing those things. Ugmo. You can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Toronto Mike. Ben is at, remind us, what is that great handle you have on Twitter? I hate Ben Rayner. I hate Ben Rayner, which is ironic. No one hates Ben Rayner. 
Our friends at I Great- do. Ah, <laughs> uh, just you're the only one. Just ben. kidding. You're the only one who hates Ben right now. Yeah. You tried to kill him once. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I might try to kill him again on the way home. No, yeah. don't even joke yeah. about that. Our friends at Great- we can joke about it because it's out in the open. <laughs> Shout out to Ridley Funeral Home. Our friends. <laughs> <laughs> I thought of Ridley Funeral Home on the way here. Shout out Look, again. if you want a discount, it's got to be like a pre-arranged <laughs> yeah, yeah. thing. You can't yeah. get it after the fact. If I'm can't. missing my head. FOTM discount. <laughs> Our friends at Great Lakes Brewery or at Great Lakes Beer. Palma Pastas at Palma Pasta. I got a lasagna for you, buddy. Recycle My Electronics or at EPRA underscore Canada. Ridley Funeral Home or at Ridley FH. Canna Cabana or at Canna Cabana underscore. And Sammy Cohn Real Estate is at Sammy Cohn. See you all. I want to check the records because I have somebody coming before Richard Griffin on Friday. I want to welcome into the studio Thursday making his Toronto Mike debut. Hold on. Hold on. Is this right? Some hobo. My goodness gracious. The return of Darren Frost with special guest Lisa Baker. What a busy week we have this week. See you all then.